Hey, hi, welcome back to the series of financial safety sessions. I am Dr. Krishna Hema, your financial safety expert. So today's topic is software architecture design. This is part two, like part one is already made and this is the part two. This covers software architecture principles and verification. See, in general, software architecture design represents all software components and their respective interactions in a hierarchical order or a representation so static aspects such as interfaces and data paths uh, between software components need to be considered also dynamic aspects uh, such as process sequences and uh, timing behavior should also be considered so remember here like you know we need to cover safety aspects like uh, the software safety requirements need to be covered in this one and non-software safe non -soft safety software requirements also need to be covered as a part of software architecture design uh, so and the other point is like every safety software component uh, can be like a newly a new development it may be you know a completely new new thing or you know uh, it is reused with some modifications so in uh, and we have another category called reused uh, as is like you know commercial of the self all of the shelf kind of uh, software components we will have so for uh, uh, for the newly developed and uh, reused with modifications category uh, software components like we need to develop in accordance with this particular clause and uh, if we are uh, using reused without modifications that is cards uh, then we need to qualify the software as per uh, as per part 8 uh, software component uh, qualification clause 12 so if you look at the uh, software architecture principles like you can have uh, uh, these many principles there are nine principles available uh, so like uh, the first one is like as we discussed uh, before like uh, the software architecture design uh, to be in a hierarchical representation hierarchical, st hierarchical structure uh, is uh, mandated uh, for the software architecture principle so it is it is highly recommended for a b c d so hierarchy is something like you know granularized approach like you know a level wise approach uh, with a representation of uh, of flow in between them uh, so and the thing and uh, the next thing is like restricted use or uh, and uh, complexity of uh, software components so uh, if you look here like the word restricted means like we have to limit the uses the, the usage should be as minimum as possible kind of we need to consider so we can see restricted word in uh, 1b 1c and uh, even in 1g also so in this case like uh, we have a limited or permissible or the minimum uses is required for all these things uh, so in this case restricted size and complexity of software components is like we need to ensure on things like uh, you know good data flow uh, and limit the number of requirements to one design element and uh, we need to ensure on the limit on the limitation of uh, the number of interfaces to one design element and we should have a limited number of parameters and we should have a limited number of global variables and uh, good test coverage and so on so we need uh, 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 coming to one c restricted size of interfaces so if you look at this thing the same thing limited size of interfaces should be there uh, so we need to ensure a proper balance between uh, the external interfaces uh, that is uh, freedom from freedom from interfe interference ffi uh, we need to ensure ensure on like uh, while we are uh, designing uh, the interfaces and uh, ex uh, except for interfaces between uh, them like there should be a clear isolation between design elements however the interface restriction or the size of interfaces restriction is uh, highly recommended in case of uh, SLD only uh, coming to 1D there is a something called strong cohesion uh, 
see if you listen to this one e one one e talks about coupling cohesion is something like it is within or inside the same component same software component if we have like you know if we further granulate this component then we can have a, a software in it right so there should be a strong bondage in between uh, in a normal uh, language we can say there should be a strong bondage in between uh, the software inside the software component okay in between the software units inside the software component but where in it there is there should be a loose coupling between uh, uh, software components that is uh, outside the software component with it is a relationship between a software component and another software component so uh, you i i hope you found the difference between them uh, see it's like again i'm i'm repeating cohesion is a relationship between means like within uh, that element inside that element and coupling is something like it is a relationship between elements so every time like from i think uh, from the time like when we are learning uh, the software development like we might have heard strong cohesion and weak coupling so the same thing strong cohesion and loose coupling is recommended here so these things are recommend highly recommended for b c d s levels uh, coming to 1f uh, we should have appropriate scheduling properties uh what this like uh, you can directly understand this thing a b c d is highly recommended here and restricted use of interrupts so as we already discussed like restricted is limited use of interrupts uh so we should uh, ensure on uh when we use interrupts we should have to know clear priority of the interrupts and uh, coming to 1h is appropriate spatial isolation of the software components and uh, one i is saying about appropriate management of shared resources these shared resources are uh, can be like you know hardware resources can be a software resources or maybe a combination of both together uh, so um, so to to do this thing like we need to have a safety mechanism in place or uh, a process measure to be in place to prevent conflicting access to shared resources uh say it's like you know one database or you know uh, one thing is accessing by two two elements at the same time two software components at the same time so the prioritization uh, to be appropriate it should be like you know first like uh, if a and b are accessing uh, at the same time then uh, we need to prioritize a then b something like that you need to write a um, Uh, write a uh, priority in that it is highly recommended in case of a b c d as a levels so these are the software architecture verification methods so walk through of a design inspection of a design so these two things can be applicable to model based development also and uh, 1c is simulation of dynamic behavior of the design um and 1d is prototype generation 1e is formal verification uh so this one is like simulation is applicable only for slt simulation of dynamic behavior of the of, of the component and uh, in case of 1d and 1e it is uh, it is not applicable for a and b but it is uh, recommended in case of c but it is highly recommended for the prototype generation in case of slt so uh, coming to 1f and 1g like we have control flow analysis and data flow analysis so control flow analysis and data flow analysis are highly recommended in case of c and d uh, so this control flow analysis and data flow analysis are only applicable for safety related uh, elements say it's like you know uh, in in the beginning of this video we have discussed like in a software architecture design we will have uh non safety related uh, requirements also to be covered and safety related requirements also to be covered so this control flow analysis and data flow analysis are only applicable for safety related functionalities or safety related components so 1h is about scheduling analysis so hope you got this concept uh, if you in the next video we are going to uh, discuss about uh, the error detection error handling and all other lato concepts in case of software architecture software architecture design and uh, if you like this uh, video subscribe to my channel thank you